Putin and China just launched the Great Reset on the West with this move. No wonder we're actively trying to go to war with them. Now, while everyone is distracted by the US banking collapse, something much bigger is actually happening right now, if you can imagine that. Yeah, China, Russia, and the rest of the BRICS nations are about to force America and Europe into a corner that they are not going to get out of. All of the signs are there. The data is really troubling. We'll get to a lot of it in this episode. The inflation crisis is getting worse by the minute. And this morning, new numbers out of Finland. Look at this, new inflation numbers that'll make your head spin. 16% inflation, the highest in 60 years. Yeah, how are those sanctions working out for you? Also, new numbers out of Poland this morning. A record inflation, 18%. Can you imagine? If the United States and Europe want their Klaus Schwab Great Reset, they are about to get it, but not in the way that they hoped for. I see the need for action. I see the need for a Great Reset. We'll have more on that in a moment. But first, did you know that we are at war with China? Oh yeah, according to our members of Congress who just got back from Taiwan last week, we're at war with China, so we better get prepared. Here's Representative Tony Gonzalez, who just returned from Taiwan, where we just sent a whole bunch of weapons. I just got back from a trip from Taiwan. Uh, it's the second trip to Taiwan in the past 14 months. Uh, I know what war looks like. We're at war. I mean, uh, this is a war. What the hell? Who the heck voted for war against China? Did you? I sure as hell didn't. Do these people even understand what they're saying? The deep state is actively pushing for war with China as the U.S. dollar continues its downward spiral into oblivion. Here's Representative Chris Stewart this week calling for the abolition of the one China policy, meaning Taiwan is not part of China anymore. And that's enough, of course, to provoke China into a war that the U.S. will not win no matter how hard we try. And this week, the U.S. announces it's sending nuclear submarines to Australia as part of the AUKUS deal. Now, even Australian newspapers said we're ready for war with China. Australia is a proxy, of course, for the United States. We will use Australia as a launching pad for war. It's an island that has really become nothing more than a military base for the United States. Even Sky News Australia just put out a new war preview with China documentary. Watch this. The United States will go to war if necessary in order to protect Taiwan. Are we ready for war? We are acting as quickly as we can. I pray that they will get it right. So get ready is the message. It's all propaganda. It's coming right from the deep state, of course. A U.S. top general is also telling his troops to get ready for war by the year 2025. General Minahan just sent a letter to his troops telling them to get ready. Well, of course, this is all happening for a reason. They're scared shitless about what Russia and China are doing, which is building an economic behemoth that the West can't compete with. So get ready for war. Now, as my wife pointed out this week about the United States, nothing is scarier than someone losing power because people who are losing power do violent and desperate things. We're watching the United States and the US dollar losing tremendous global power. And China is now getting ready for massive US war sanctions. This morning we learned that China is dumping massive amounts of US debt. The data comes right from the US Treasury. China is the second largest holder of US Treasuries. Now, if the United States freezes those assets, China is screwed. So China is stockpiling gold, dumping American dollars faster than Jerome Powell can actually print them. And Russia today announced all those sanctions that the US and Europe threw at them didn't work. Now, I'm going to read from today's report, quote, the Russian economy is developing in a new way with GDP expected to grow as soon as the second quarter of this year, President Vladimir Putin predicted on Thursday. Speaking at a conference this week, Putin said the country had managed to fully compensate for the loss of access to Western markets. According to the head of the state, Russia's foreign trade grew by more than 8% last year, while last year's trade surplus hit $332 billion. So even before we blew up Russia's natural gas pipeline, they were building this coalition to dethrone the United States dollar dominance. And historically, the way that we deal with people like this is we threaten war and we actually try to destabilize these countries through regime change and sanctions like we're doing right now with Russia in Ukraine. Now, we learned this morning that even more countries are trying to move away from the U.S. dollar and joining the BRICS coalition of Russia, China, Brazil, India, South Africa. The BRICS nations are developing their own currency backed by gold and natural gas and oil, commodities. The U.S. dollar is not backed by anything. And just look at these freaking headlines this morning. African nations want to join BRICS. Russia supports Algeria joining BRICS. 
Iran and Saudi Arabia want to join BRICS and even Mexico. Earlier this week, Mexico announced its intent to join Russia and China as part of the BRICS nations. I mean, holy cow. So watch as we alienate our closest allies, just like we did with the Nord Stream pipeline destruction. Last week, we saw a stunning amount of propaganda, and it had to do with the Nord Stream pipeline. First, the New York Times ran a propaganda piece saying this week that we can now confirm that a pro-Ukrainian group carried out the pipeline attack. Pro-Ukrainian group? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, a.k.a. the CIA and the United States. And then not to be outdone, German newspaper followed up like good state-run media does and says, yes, it was a pro-Ukrainian group. And they even identified the yacht that these people used to blow up the pipeline. Yeah, this is the yacht called the Andromeda, which might be the most amazing pile of garbage I've ever seen if it wasn't so sad that they think we'd actually believe them. They think that you're stupid. We know 500 kilograms of explosives were used to blow up the pipeline, which if you put that much weight on this boat, it would sink to the bottom of the ocean. But don't get too caught up in any of the details, okay? As journalist Aaron Mate writes about this yacht, To whoever is doing the Nord Stream cover-up, first, I don't envy you. Tough job. Second, why not find a bigger boat, one that could conceivably carry the hundreds of pounds of explosives needed to blow up a heavily fortified deep-sea pipeline in multiple areas? Next, Europe is trying desperately to downplay the Nord Stream attack because it portends something much bigger an energy great reset for Europe that we are watching unfold right now. This is something that Europe wanted, but they wanted to do it on their own terms, eliminating combustion car engines by 2035, eliminating oil and natural gas, turning off nuclear power plants, and then moving all of Europe to solar and wind completely. It was never going to work, but they believed that it would. They thought that Russia would come crawling back, crying, banging for Europe to take their natural gas after their, we blew up their pipeline. Instead, Putin and China just flipped a big frickin' switch and shifted those resources into the BRICS nations. Indonesia. Hey, do you guys need cheap oil and gas from Russia? What about you, Mexico? What about you, China? And that's exactly what happened. Yesterday, we got word that Russia and China have just hit a new trade record, unlike anything we've ever seen before. And new customs data out this week shows that Russia and China are now on pace to hit $200 billion this year up 31% over last year. So why on earth would Russia go back to providing oil and natural gas to Europe when they're actively sending weapons to attack Russia? The answer is they will not. And if that's not bad enough news for the United States, there's this today. The Chinese yuan currency has outperformed the dollar by volume on trading on the Moscow exchange for the first time ever. <laughs> Think about that. Based on data from Moscow Exchange, the Chinese yuan was the most traded currency in February, displacing the U.S. dollar from the top spot. And we got our clearest indication from China last week, right from the mouth of the President Xi Jinping, that they are not going to take this any longer from the United States, that they view what the United States is doing as suppression of China. During his speech last week, he said, quote, Western countries led by the United States have implemented all-around containment, encirclement, and suppression against us, bringing unprecedentedly severe challenges to our country's development. When have you ever heard a Chinese president talk that way? Well, the answer is you haven't because they don't. This is unprecedented. So the biggest supplier of cheap natural gas just vanished from the European market. And the effects of this are now starting to show even during this mild winter. Remember, the real story will be next winter when all of their backup supplies are gone. Now Russia's natural gas is gone, and Bloomberg reports that the energy crisis will cost Germany $1 trillion. You can send that bill to the United States. And because of Russia's gas restrictions, we've seen the largest inflationary shock in Europe since World War II, even beating that of the oil crisis in the 1970s. Also this week, we learned that Germany is warning of electrical outages. According to the Welt am Sonntag newspaper, Germany should expect power cuts, that over the next two years, they won't be able to handle the extra load to the power grid now that their power supplies have been cut, unless they can get new forms of cheap energy, which we'll get to in a minute. And just this morning, Bloomberg reporting that energy prices are soaring across Europe. Gas futures up 21% which is the most since June. This will destroy lives and businesses. This comes at a time when natural gas prices have actually dropped significantly. So even though the prices have dropped, Europe is paying more than ever for natural gas. Imagine that for a second. Imagine when those natural gas prices go back up, which they will. 
So that's the news portion of today's video. Now I want to tell you about today's sponsor, which is tied directly to the natural gas needs of Europe today. And if you're an investor, you need to pay attention to what I'm about to show you. This company that I want to tell you about is MCF Energy. Right now, their stock is trading at 41 cents a share. But in my opinion, that's not going to last much longer. And their stock is up 30% this year already. Here's their stock ticker on your screen. And I'm going to pay attention to a number of key details here, but here's their stock ticker, MCFNF. This company is right now the one and only company currently exploring for natural gas in Western Europe. Think about that for a second. As the war broke out, MCF Energy jumped into action, started studying the natural gas spots in Europe, and designated 20 specific drilling sites. Then they narrowed it down to the two best spots right now. Can you imagine? No other company was doing this because they were lulled into a false sense of security using cheap Russian gas. Then the war breaks out and the European Union, which has been nuts about getting away from fossil fuels, suddenly did an about face on natural gas and they changed the designation of natural gas to a green energy. They realized Europe was in deep shit, so they said, okay, go explore, go find natural gas in Europe, start drilling right now, go, go, go. And MCF Energy is literally the one company doing this right now. Unbelievable. So right now, natural gas prices have dropped 70% over the past six months. And that's the largest six-month decline we've ever seen on record in the history of natural gas. Only six times in history has natural gas seen 50% declines. And every single time, natural gas prices swing back up like a pendulum in the opposite direction. In fact, history says that one year from today, natural gas will be up 25% and two years from today, they could be up by over 40%. Now that's historically what has happened. Guys, if that happens, MCF Energy is in the driver's seat to catapult by triple digits, perhaps quadruple digits, because you're talking about the company that is front and center, leading the charge for exploration, staged natural gas deposits across Europe. And they've identified and bought two amazing drilling zones that are in the exploration phase right now. One is in Austria, the other is in Germany. Now, Austria is about to start drilling this year, and the Germany spot is waiting on the permits so they can start there. This means this stock price in my opinion, that means the stock price is not going to stay at that price much longer, in my opinion. Once drilling commences on these spots and they hit pay dirt, look out. This is just the beginning. They just raised $12 million and are about to buy more spots for drilling. These guys know exactly what they're doing. Buy great land with natural gas spots, drill, rinse, and repeat. Now, let me dive a little deeper into this company. This is the only public company offering exposure to a new European gas market right now. At, since the start of the Ukraine war. And it's the first company to become a natural gas developer and explorer in Europe. Now, when I first started deep diving and discovering this company and started doing my research, which I'll show you in a minute, I jumped up and I told my wife, we've got to invest in this company. We've got to invest in this company. So let me show you why I'm so excited about the long-term implications of this company. Number one, the people on this team are unbelievable. They have an unbelievable track record of creating energy companies and then selling them for massive profits. They've already done it like three or four times. The team that came together to create MCF Energy in the past already founded and grew multiple billion dollar energy companies in Europe and they sold them and they made a lot more money. They know exactly what they are doing. These people make a lot of money for their shareholders. That's what they do. General Wesley Clark is a strategic advisor to the company. Now, he was the supreme commander of NATO. Um, I've interviewed him many, many times over the years, and he is absolutely connected and one of the most well-connected people in the United States in the European theater. So when he gets on the phone, things happen. He opens doors. Right after he got out of politics, he went into the energy sector and he sold a company that made billions. That company was called Bankers Petroleum, and he helped grow that company by 2,000%. Yeah, he 20x that company and sold it for $2 billion. Basically, the team on MCF Energy has done this four times, where they built companies in the energy sector in Europe and then sold them off. Number two, MCF Energy wants to become the dominant natural gas company in Europe, and there are none right now. There haven't been for 40 years because they could get cheap natural gas from Russia, and now they need this more than ever. Number three, right now Europe is buying expensive natural gas from the United States and Canada. They have to freeze it, they have to load it on ships, and then they have to bring it across the ocean and then basically unfreeze it. They're paying three to four times the amount that they normally do. This is unsustainable. 
And when gas prices are so low right now, why would they pay four times more for it? It's ridiculous. So I'm personally betting big on this company in my portfolio of companies right now. Do your own due diligence on this company. As of this recording this weekend, they are trading right now at 41 cents a share. Now, a lot of you asked me a few weeks ago, what brokerage do I use to buy some of these smaller producers because you can't buy them on the smaller exchanges like Robinhood, et cetera. You need one of the big boys like E-Trade. That's the one I personally use. I've been using E-Trade since I think college actually. I think, no, I was using Scott Trade. Yeah, but I've been using E-Trade for like a decade now. That's the one I use to buy some of these smaller mining stocks like this. You can also use Fidelity or TD Ameritrade. But again, personally, I use E-Trade in the United States. Do your own due diligence. Make, make your own decision on what you want to do about that. So guys, do your own due diligence on this company. Do your own studying. I'm a big advocate of natural gas and fossil fuels, as you know from watching this show. We need them more than ever right now. These insane politicians are trying to move us to solar, and they're watching this plan crumble right before their faces. I'll have links in the description below. You can look at their website. You can check out their latest projects in Europe, and I'll have a ticker in the description as well. And we will see you next time, everyone.